Welcome to the ArcGIS, experiencing the value and power of imagery uh, through the WebGIS pattern. Uh, my name is Jamal Johnson. I'm a product manager for the defense and intelligence community, as well as the uh, product manager for ArcGIS Excalibur. And my colleague, uh, Matt Calamita, is my lead engineer. And today, for the next hour or so, we'd like to share a story of what Excalibur is all about. So be before we get into Excalibur, by a show of hands, um, who've heard of Excalibur before? Great. All right. By a show of hands, who are my traditional imagery specialists or analysts? OK. What about GIS professionals? Great. What about analysts in general? Awesome. Well, guess what? You and all you guys are in the right room. <laughs> So uh, like I said, before we begin, let's a quick you know, 30 seconds or so just to make sure everyone on the same baseline about the ArcGIS platform. So it really consists of three major components. Um, we have a system of record, and that's about hosting and managing massive amounts of data. And then we have the uh, system of insights. It really is um, the way in which our users interact with the ArcGIS platform um, through intuitive applications. Um, that are you know, easy and to use and, and focus on workflows. And then we have the system of uh, insights and there's experience in which uh, analysts can apply you know, RAS analytic functions, functions to conduct analysis. Now we all know, um, um, and Jack mentioned this on Monday, that imagery has always been part of the Esri ecosystem. Um, but we're doing something a little bit different you know, over the last you know, year or so. So what we're really doing is not only treating imagery as a different layer, what we're doing is taking that, that core principle and foundation of a GIS, and we're building an imagery platform on top of it. Um, and you're gonna see why that's so important, and it's truly about integrating you know, the tradecraft of an imagery analyst and the tradecraft of a GIS specialist. And the reason why I ask you guys in the room what type of user you are because now not only the GIS professionals can benefit from this application, the imager analysts, and even the guys that are not even imager GIS specialists, a regular analyst can also benefit from it. So let's, let's take a look at what that, uh, the imager platform looks like. So the imager platform is, is uh, broken down into five major components. Um, you have the uh, visualization and exploitation. And that's about you know, quickly accessing and utilizing um, imagery uh, or using tools to, um, to exploit and interpret uh, imagery. And then we have our analysis component. And an analysis component, um, that's where um, our ArcGIS Pro product traditionally sits. And that's for individuals using the imagery to do like deep, rich analysis. And then um, we have the map production. And the map production is, you know, a product like our drone map products, right? Taking photos of imageries and, and creating a map for it. Then of course, we have our uh, imagery management component, and that's our image server. And that's really about you know, managing massive amounts of images and hosting that images as services. Um, and all those five, uh, uh, those five components really makes up the entire, entire platform, the imagery platform, and Excalibur, Depending who you are, you know, fits in you know, three or so of those, those components. The visualization, exploitation, the analysis for some, and others may use it as a management system. So we already sort of kind of got this out of the way, right? Who's for? It's for you guys, right? Our specialists, our regular analysts, as well as our managers who need to quickly discover analyze, report you know, from information um, from, from imagery. It's a cloud-based solution. So um, currently, ArcGIS Excalibur is part of the ArcGIS um, enterprise. So we're not on ArcGIS online yet. So this is an application for ArcGIS portal um, that provides a simple and tool design that works with imagery of all types and not only does it work with images of all types, it allows our users to share those results um, in dynamic information product. So the, the reason why I want to show that, that slide deck up front is that Excalibur doesn't, it's not a system that sits outside of the ArcGIS 
in a family of system as part of it, completely integrated of it. So you can conduct analysis inside of Excalibur and take advantage of some of your other uh, Esri uh, products. And Matt's gonna show that, you, show that in, in a few. Again, some of these, uh, uh, these personas, like I said, the general analysts, um, those are your non-specials, right? But yet they still have a, a need to, to utilize Excalibur. And, and the reason why that's important is that we've designed the application to be easy to use, right? Um, we have you know, certain select workflows that you're not required to have you know, you know, a doctor degree in GIS or image to use it. But yet you still have the power and the rig of analysis on the back end. Um, for some of the imagery specialists, because it's a lightweight application, um, some may think it's not for them, but actually it is, right? So we've uh, you know, uh, introduced a new concept inside of the entire Ezra ecosystem to help you know, streamline those different processes you know, through a notion of an imagery project. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then the managers, um, folks that's you know, managing these analysts across their, their, their organization, a multiple organization, you know, uh, giving them experience um, to quickly you know, share our information, share our projects, um, you know, review those projects and disseminate it um, and use things like, you know, other applications inside of RGIS to, you know, performance metrics and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But all that is built inside of the, uh, the, uh, the experience itself when you use Excalibur. So what's uh, required for it, right? So like I mentioned before, um, it's part of the RGIS enterprise um, starting at the 10.7 the release. Um, you're required to have ArcGIS image server, and then the application itself. So if you have a baseline deployment, I mean, if, you, if you already are currently are an Esri user, and you have a baseline deployment of enterprise, the only thing you would need is the you know, image server, you don't have an image server, and then the portal application itself. So the application is really, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a portal application. So let's dive a little bit deeper in some of the, uh, the product features. So within uh, Excalibur, you have four major components. Um, you have an integrated uh, imagery management, and that's really about uh, accessing and discovering, searching for your imagery. Um, because it's integrated with the platform, um, we, have, uh, we take advantage of an image server by conducting on-the-fly processing. Um, and dynamic visualization. You can view images side by side. We'll, we'll go a little bit deeper there. Uh, the imagery projects, right? Uh, this is about organizing all the resources for a task. Um, and then the imagery derived products. So not only can you search for your imagery, not only can you um, conduct your analysis in the same application, you also can share that information out as uh, information products. So this whole imagery management uh, or access and discovery, right? It's their interactive search and discovery capabilities. You know, a quick way to, to search and analyze your, uh, uh, search and, and find your images. What we find is, um, when we was talking to a lot of customers, that most customers traditionally go to a different application to search and find the imagery. And then they, once they find it, they locate it, then they open up another application to do the exploitation. Well, inside of Excalibur, you're not leaving your, your experience, right? The same experience that you're going to exploit is the same experience you use to locate and find your imagery. And things like, you know, user-defined settings. Um, so if you're in a particular area of the world, um, you can, you know, set your settings to automatically find, you know, those updated imagery in that particular area. You're not required to search your entire organization repository. Um, Exploitation, um, we have uh, tools for on-the-fly processing, dynamic visualization. Um, this side-by-side -side, um, visualization of oblique and auto-rectified imagery, to me this is really way, where the two trade crafts start to, to meet. So from an imagery analyst perspective, um, imagery analysts, you know, they're used to looking at oblique imagery. At the same time, they also are required to use some type of application to get contextual reference. So maybe that's a, an Esri product, maybe that's a Google, or some type of mapping product um, to figure out you know, where they are and then you have the imagery on the, other, on, on the opposite side. But what we did is that in that same framework, 
we have the ability to not only look at your oblique imagery, but we also um, can look at your um, 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 oblique imagery. And then things like, we support like, you know, image annotation, um, you know, making marks up on imagery and same as the graphics or, or as a feature service that goes inside of a database. This concept of imagery projects. So again, you know, regardless of what persona you are, there's a few things that you need to do when you conduct imagery analysis, right? First, you have your information need, your question, your, request, your RFI, your request for information, your question you're trying to answer, right? So that really drives the entire process. So that's given to you by somebody somewhere, maybe it's in another system, right? Um, then it's the imagery that you're gonna use to, for your exploitation. So that can be located somewhere else with inside of the organization. Um, also, this uh, contextual and reference information that you may need, you use to help with your exploitation. Then it's the tools, right? So what we did was, from a project standpoint, we created a workflow that um, managers can organize all those resources in one location. So now instead of, of an analyst sitting now, you know, going somewhere to find the question, finding what imagery they need, finding what reference information they need, uh, finding what, you know, what tools they're gonna use to conduct that particular workflow, we've organized that, all that into one complete package. So when analysts sit down to work, they have everything they need to do. And they can immediately get to work. Trying to save that analyst time um, on all the, not, the not, not that they're not important, but saving them all the time on their research so they can have more time on, on the analysis side of the house. And that's a new concept um, at the 10-7 um, um, level, and, and Macklin discussed that, that project item in portal. And then these derived products, right? So you know, we support things like the traditional, hey, save this graphic as a PowerPoint, right? A couple clicks of a button, we do that. But more importantly, when the information is extracted from imagery, because it's built on top of that GIS framework, that data now is saved inside of your enterprise GIS. Which is, once it's inside of your enterprise GIS, you can use things like story map and dashboard to really get away from that static production of information product, make it more, uh, more dynamic. And finally, we have our, um, uh, our settings. So here is about, really about personalizing your experience. Um, if you're familiar with, with Esri, um, a lot of the, um, not all, except this one, now, but a lot of the applications, um, the settings are controlled by, by an admin. So if your organization wants some particular setting, an admin set that, create that setting, and that's it, right? And that's, you know, all, all of us will have the same setting, and we're all part of the same organization. But starting at 10.7 and with Excalibur, we really wanted to change that, um, not only for Excalibur, but all of our apps inside of Esri. Is that why can't we introduce this notion of personalizing that experience? For example, my area of the world I'm you know, responsible for may be California. Matt may be New York, right? So why, when I search for my imagery, the organ I'm searching the, the New, York, New York area responsibility when I'm constantly looking at Excalibur. So I can, I can, at the user level, I can create those settings to more personalize my experience. Maybe I'm in a, in a light setting and I need you know, the light background on, on the framework to help make features pop out in the imagery. Maybe it's a dark setting. Whatever the case may be, um, you can uh, configure those at a couple clicks of a button um, at, the, uh, at the user level. And with that, I'll turn it over to Matt to actually show you guys Excalibur at work. Awesome, thanks, Shimon. Uh, my name's Matt Calamito, I'm the lead product engineer for Excalibur, so I'm gonna take um, just a couple minutes here uh, to basically step you through the entire Excalibur application, um, and we'll do that through um, two different workflows. One workflow is what we would traditionally call kind of a, an ad hoc workflow, right? I may be tasked over a specific area of interest and I need to identify or highlight or call out areas of activity and then disseminate what my findings are in something like a PowerPoint briefing, right? That's kind of more ad hoc. 
And then I'm going to show you, take you down a path of a pre-planned workflow uh, through the notion of an imagery project. Um, and this is kind of what Jaman had mentioned, the new item type, um, basically taking all your resources and allowing an analyst just to open it up and begin their work. Um, so two separate workflows, but it'll take you through the whole end-to-end -end of Excalibur. We'll leave uh, some room for questions and some time for questions. Um, so I'm going to switch my screen here. Um, so what we're seeing here is just a, a Portal 10.7 environment. Um, just to give you an idea of where Excalibur resides and lives, Excalibur is a premium app, as Jaman had mentioned, separate installer, uh, very similar to uh, Insights for ArcGIS, if those that are familiar with that. Um, so from the app launcher, Matt Calamito is licensed for Excalibur. So it's a per user based licensing model. I have a license to it. I have access to Excalibur. And in a single click, I can launch it from my portal environment. Okay. Um, up top, the top cards this is kind of what we would call our connect view. It's kind of the home page, if you will, the default view. And one of the things Excalibur does is it makes it easy to search and discover imagery. One of the key um, areas that we heard feedback as we brought imagery to the web was how do I search and discover select images out of my collection of imagery, right? How do I even know what imagery I have available to me? And there's a couple different ways that we allow you to search, discover, and interrogate your images. One is a traditional image service URL. So an ArcGIS image server service. I have a REST um, endpoint, uh, REST services endpoint here. So these are all image services. Why? Because they have the image server extension. So at version 1 and 1.1, one, uh, one, which comes out on Tuesday, um, Excalibur works solely with ArcGIS image server services with future expansion into things like WMS, WMTS. Um, but, but essentially, I supply a URL. So if I just grab a REST endpoint, um, I can copy that link. I can paste this in here. We run a validation against your image service. Make sure you have access to it, A, and B, it's a, it's a true endpoint of an image server. And we can do one of two things. I'm going to call this out a couple different times to show you the UI Jaman was talking about. We want to make it easy to use and make it more muscle memory. When I see a certain color, I know what I'm doing. I'm going a certain way. So we're trying to apply some UI UX design to this application to make it easy. So you're going to hear these words, connect to canvas, blue button, connect to catalog, gray button. We'll get into what both those mean in just a second. So if I have an image service URL, I can do that. This middle one here is called My Available Imagery. As a user, I may not know what portal for ArcGIS is. I may not care, but I just need to know what imagery I have available in my organization. To those that are portal users, to those that understand the ArcGIS platform, if you notice up at the top on each of these cards, it's of type imagery layer. We are essentially running a filter against the content within your content and your organization's content. All these different types of item types, web maps, dashboards, feature layers, right? All we're doing is running a filter and saying, based on who you are and what you have access to, here's all the imagery layers that are available to you. Quick way to discover what is there in my organization. I can see some details about it, right? And then there's those two buttons again. Connect to Canvas Blue, Connect to Catalog Gray, right? That same UI design. And we'll get into what each of those means again in just a second. Up top, you'll notice it says that I have four imagery layers available for quick access. Jaman had mentioned at the end there this notion of user settings. This is the first example that's surfacing of that. Why I'm different than Jaman is because I may work over a specific area of interest. My tasks might change. And therefore, I might require different imagery day to day, week to week, right? So up in the top, you see these gray check boxes, right? Some of them are checked on. Four of them actually are checked on. I'm going to uncheck uh, two of them here. And what it's telling me is that my settings are now updated. So at 10.7, we introduced the notion of user settings. It's basically at the user endpoint, for those that are interested, um, the user resources endpoint. Um, and we're basically saving those settings so that regardless of what browser I'm on, if I log into the system, my experience will be the same because I set it that way. Um, and now you'll notice I only have two saved imagery layers. right? So what does that mean, Matt? Why do we care? Well, the last aspect of search and discovery not only is a URL, not only can I just see what's available, but we have this very interactive way through our imagery catalog search. And before I get into it, down in the lower left corner is a place that I can quickly connect to or search and discover on specific imagery layers, right? And if you notice, I only have two down here. These are where my saved and immediate go-to are, and it's very flexible. I can click on and off to save these as my favorites and then you know, uncheck them to no longer have them as my favorite. So that's just an example of how these user settings surface in the application. 
The imagery catalog search allows you to interrogate a specific collection of imagery. In this case, I'm currently interrogating my San Francisco panchromatic image service. And from here, we can start defining um, search setting criteria, right? Whether that's your area of interest, so we do take your current map extent, what you see here, the United States, but I can also interrogate it based on my needs. So I may have specific date ranges that I wanna search against. I may have, I only wanna see images with certain cloud cover, right? So we are reading in your image service, understanding what metadata it has, and allowing you then to search against it, right? And I can even add an area of interest filter here. I can draw it directly on the map, and in a single click, I can run that search. And based on the, the um, I don't know if you can see it down there, yep, this one you can, the orange settings down there, that's kind of my active search summary. Now I know what actual settings are being applied to this specific filter. So I applied date ranges, cloud cover, and area of interest. Those are the ones that are in orange. I did not even ask for anything about obliquity or predicted near, so it's bringing everything back in those, those regards, right? And now I can take a look at that re search result list. Um, each of these results, as I highlight, you'll notice the corresponding footprints being highlighted in the image. Um, I can start selecting specific images and I can start interrogating this in what we would traditionally call our map space, right? So we're taking the image, it's being orthorectified on the fly by the power of the image server. In stream, this is a full resolution image based on the pixels in my current view. This is not just a thumbnail. So I can truly gain an understanding of this image specifically in what we would call map space, the geospatial view of things. I can look at the metadata of the image, right? To gain an understanding, I can you know, start interrogating each of the, the, the metadata, the data about the data. And then there is an actual thumbnail of that image if I, was, if I was interested. The great thing about this application is I can stay in my search experience to also view that same image dynamically in its native perspective. If you noticed, as soon as I close out of this preview window, those buildings look like they were falling out of the sky. Why? Because we were taking that oblique image and we were trying to fit it to a 2D map. Well, for those that work with imagery, specifically oblique, this looks a lot better and allows me to understand and analyze the image based on how it was collected off the sensor at a specific angle. Um, so again, this is a full resolution image. I can, I can rotate the image. I can view the metadata from this, this, um, this current view as well. So I did say we interrogate your metadata. Let's just switch uh, real quick to a different image service. As soon as I select that, you'll notice my search results are cleared. We zoom out to the extent of the image service. So we interrogate that image service and say, based on the default extent, we know that image is around this area. If I go to my search settings, you will notice I don't have any additional metadata to search against. Um, all I can do is define an area of interest. Why? Because some of the Metadata is not available in this specific type of image service. So if I just draw a quick AO over this area and I go to my search results and I take a look at the metadata here, I don't have much metadata, right? So it really depends on what type of image service you've published and the app experience will come to light based on those types of services. So let's select a, a couple image services here around a specific area. Maybe I'm tasked with highlighting key areas of activity, right? So I can select multiple images. As I select them, we're now moving to what we would call our queued images tab. This basically says I've interrogated a whole image collection or what we would refer to as our image services. From that image service, I basically want one, two, three, ten images out of that collection. So now in a quick, easy way, when we talk image management, a lot of folks look at this and had trouble saying, how do I just pick one or two images from my image service? This is a way now to interrogate those and bring those to the forefront. At the bottom here, we can do one of two things. I can now take those two images that I know I can identify areas over this key uh, port of interest, right? And I can either create a new project or connect to the canvas. There's that blue button again, connect to canvas. So this is the catalog experience. This is how I search and discover imagery. Once I find those images or, or image of interest, I can then connect to the canvas. This is where your exploitation, your use, your work with the image begins. So we didn't leave the application. We didn't download images locally. We are still streaming in services and then working with those selected images. So for those that are uh, you know, familiar with some of our raster functions, we're basically doing a lock raster on these specific images out of that image service collection. And now we're in our canvas view. Again, this is where we work with our images. So we have a set of tools, both display tools that I can work with the pixels, pixel manipulation, and then exploitation tools, things I can do like marking up or annotating on top of the image, very PowerPoint-like. 
mensurations, measurements, 2D, 3D measurements based on the metadata. And then lastly, being able to disseminate out what I'm doing with my image to certain things like PowerPoints and, and, and whatnot. Um, down here we have our image metadata table. Um, one interesting thing that we can do, as Jaman had mentioned, is this notion of side-by-side -side view. Taking a specific image, and as I zoom in on one side, you're gonna notice the other side is also zooming in, right? Our current extents are what we would call locked. On the left-hand side is your traditional geospatial view, just to kind of get that point across. We're ortho-rectifying that oblique image to try to fit it onto that map, right? And you can see that we're doing that here. Well, on the, the, the right-hand side, this oblique image is the way in which I may want to view it. It was how it was captured off the sensor. So as a user, I may not care about the map space, and I only want to work with the image in its traditional way. So I'm going to start taking uh, some of our display tools to step you through. So Jamana had mentioned you may not need to understand a lot about um, you know, being a true trained analyst on the imagery side. But we have simple tools to quickly apply things like DRA and gamma. And this should light up here uh, if it didn't get washed out on the projector. Um, as we're applying in stream to those pixels, those uh, dynamic range adjustments and those gamma functions or, or um, um, display methods to this image. I can also, in stream, make this uh, multispectral image back to a panchromatic by changing those band combinations, right? All in on the fly, so all of us here could be looking at the same image. The power of the image server is it's one image on disk, and each of us has our own view of the image based on how we're manipulating those pixels. Very, very powerful for those that aren't using the image server. Um, I can reset that back to, to look at this in, in three band here. If we had renders, which we'll get into in just a minute, I can apply those. Um, enhancements for those that do care about changing your resampling methods, different stretch methods, maybe I don't want min-max, I want percent clip or standard deviation, applying filters like pan sharpening, line detection, smoothening, right? So we do have these operations that are coming from the image service that are available that I could do again in stream in the browser dynamically. So maybe as a user, I need to call out key areas of activity at this port. I do see some cargo loading occurring um, at this port. So I can use in very PowerPoint-like um, fashion, I can start annotating on top of my image. In this case, maybe I want to call out um, these key areas of, of um, activity occurring. Um, I want to add a text label. We'll call this cargo loading. And maybe I want my font size to be a little bit bigger. And I can add that text label. And then maybe I'll just kind of connect that to further highlight or call out this area of activity, right? So just simple, easy ways, changing color, changing shapes. How do I annotate on top of my image to highlight or call out something of interest? Um, we also have the opportunity to, to produce measurements or mensurations. Again, this is dependent on your metadata. And the accuracy of these measurements will depend on if your image service is also tied to an elevation service, right? So in addition to your, M, uh, your um, um, RPCs or your, your actual sensor model on the image, the metadata coming in, and how that image service was published against an elevation service will be more accurate, right? And then lastly, on this kind of ad hoc way, um, I can export my kind of findings, if I will, down to a PowerPoint presentation where maybe this will have to go to a briefing. I want to put this in my, my organization's templates, right? So in just a couple clicks here, We'll call this cargo loading at port, and I can quickly create a PowerPoint presentation. What this does, it's going to dump my current view into a PowerPoint and take the metadata from the image and throw it into the notes section of the PowerPoint. Um, this is where we, you know, right now it's, it's, it's very simple at version 1.0.1.1, but now I can cut and paste this and put, place this in my organization's templates. We had talked about the notion of user settings, right? As we see this application grow, another area of user settings we like to have is I have a template that's different than your template, that's different than another person's template. Being able to kind of download this PowerPoint into my own template I think would be a very good, useful workflow, defining the size of maybe that export, right? So we see a lot of growth here in certain areas of that. So that's kind of the ad hoc workflow there. Um, I know uh, I want to show the, the, the pre-plan workflow, then re, uh, leave room for, for some questions. Um, so again, what we did there, we searched and discovered through many different ways, right? I can apply an image service, and I can connect to the catalog, right? That's that whole image management, search and discover, interrogate that collection of imagery, or connect directly to the canvas where I work with it, right? So we can do that through a URL. I can see what imagery I have available to me based on uh, these cards here, this is the imagery layers that I have access to. And then lastly, we 
to our imagery catalog and we interrogated specific image services. So many different ways I can begin finding imagery in my organization. Um, the last thing I wanted to show before I switch to the other workflow is in my available imagery. Uh, who here has heard of the Landsat views, the, the available image services? Anyone familiar with those, Landsat? All right. So we're going to connect directly to 888,000 plus images uh, in our Canvas view. This is a service that's available online if you want to start testing with some image services. Why I'm connecting to this specific one is a couple different things. Um, a, to show you basically in stream how quickly something can be applied uh, to this large of a data set. Um, and also, because when I go to my image display tools, you'll notice I don't have any band combinations. I don't have things going on. Why? Because this service is already predefined with what we would call renderers. So whoever published this image service applied with our raster functions in a raster chain, allowing me to easily, as a user, may not know anything about that, but I can start changing this image dynamically in the browser. Right now, I'm looking at agriculture with DRA, and in just a single click, I could change this to color infrared. This is going to basically call and change all these pixels in stream so that I'm viewing this same type of imagery, single image on disk, in many different ways based on those renders being applied. Um, and maybe this time we'll also just look at bathymetric here, right? Just showing you another example of how quickly these things change. Uh, lastly, if I change this back to user defined, that's the ability where then I can change these band combinations because nothing was predefined for me. So just another example of how we can start using some of these tools um, to really interrogate imagery. All right, the last uh, next workflow we're going to go over is the imagery project workflow. This is that pre-planned workflow. Jaman had talked about new item type, right? So let me just switch back over to the portal real quick. At 10.7, why 10.7 is required for Excalibur is this new imagery project item type. It's a new item type in the system. If you're a user that uh, initially creates a new imagery project, which can be done through Excalibur, we create a new folder in your content called the Excalibur Imagery Projects. And if you'll notice, there's the new item type, right? It's called the Excalibur Imagery Project. Um, the logo that you'll start seeing of this item type as I open this looks like basically a toolbox with some rasters there, right? So you'll start seeing this come to life at 10.7. I can open these things directly from my content into Excalibur if I desire. Or using Excalibur, I can simply take a look at existing imagery projects that I, as a user, have access to. These are projects that are shared to a group in which I am a part of. And I can start seeing um, interesting things about these imagery projects, right? So I can start filtering them dynamically based on what I'm looking for. I can see a name about the project, a brief description, who created it, when was it created, and then ultimately what type of project it is. At version 1.0 and 1.1, we tackled two different project types. One of the key ones is called an observation imagery project. Why are observation imagery projects or imagery project types important? Because they surface specific tools and workflows to allow the user to stay more focused. It provides them with a streamlined experience. So instead of just talking about it, let's open up one of these and we'll take a closer look at them. So here we are. We just talked about this canvas view. This is where I work with the imagery. So you're going to notice a couple different things, right? My base map's different. I have what we would call vector content overlaid on top of the image, right? If I now open my tools menu, I have a whole new set of tools called project tools. Why? I opened up an imagery project. I didn't just open up an imagery project. It was an observation imagery project. And now I have a set of observation tools. So as we start to release more imagery project types, these specific tools will focus and surface to the user. Different experience than something like a desktop application where I have tools everywhere and I find it. We're bringing the tools to you based on the project type you just opened up. Every project, regardless of the type, will have a set of instructions. It tells the analyst, the user, what they need to accomplish in this specific project. Right? And in this case, I might be identifying areas of active construction taking place within a defined area of interest. Cool. Now I don't need to figure out what I'm trying to do. I also don't need to find the data. Overlaid on here is reference layers. These are just feature services that are available in my organization. They can be interacted with. I can toggle them on or off. Right? These are layers. Now I'm not searching for data. I'm not questioning what I'm doing. It's all here. And as a user, I can begin to get to work. So that's kind of the core concept of these imagery projects. We have time sliders available specifically on your, on your project layers. Here are my observation types. right? So as I start moving this, it's just a simple time slider. It's allowing me to see previous observations that were collected in the same area to provide me with further context. 
Now, knowing that my task at hand is to collect and record observations based on active construction, I'm gonna place one of my images in what we would call, again, our focus view, and I can start collecting information. I do see here, um, I can use some of my observation tools to start collecting these observations. Um, I do see some new construction in this image that hasn't been captured. And as I brought up my observation tools, you'll notice this is a palette of icons based on the observation type. And in this case, our activity status of construction. So once I've identified in my image um, the actual status of construction, in this case, I'm looking for active construction, I can click on that corresponding icon and start clicking on the components here the components of active construction. And as you notice, I'm collecting, it's collecting both an image and in map space, right? And I can turn the image off on the other side if I wanted to, to further show that. A form now displays allowing me to put immediate information or contextual information into these observations. So we'll just say that this is active construction on block. Domains, drop downs that you have in these layers, they could be your layers based on what you're collecting, are um, supported here in this view, right? So maybe this is some commercial construction. But in addition to these manual fields, Excalibur is something to help automate a lot of these observation-based workflows to allow your organizations to perform what we would call traceability. It's, a, it's, it's allowing us to then tie the observation directly to an image. So therefore, those observations I just collected are tied to this specific image. Within this specific imagery project we just opened up, they were each collected at a specific date, time, a specific location by a specific user, me, all the way down to a specific map scale. So now, as an organization, I can practically recreate the environment in which these observations were originally collected. So I'm not asking why the observation was made when it was. Why did somebody make that call? I can now be zoomed at the level that they were to try to gain an understanding of the environment in which they collected that observation. When all the information is input, I can then just submit those to be written to the system of record. They become readily available now for anyone in my organization to leverage in downstream analysis. So Jamana had mentioned image-derived products. Content created in Excalibur can now be used downstream in analysis, right? So I have an operations dashboard here. I just collected about 30 seconds ago three new observations. Guess what just showed up in my ops dashboard, right? So now I can click on any one of these and start interrogating. So the concept here is the content created in Excalibur can now be used immediately for others. I may be a supervisor. There may be numerous analysts working on those imagery projects. And now as a supervisor, I wanna see all observations that are taking place in my organization to gain a holistic approach. Different uh, application, different kind of use case, but still these are observations that were collected in Excalibur that I'm now throwing in an, in an insights. Anybody familiar with insights here? Have they used it? Cool. It's a way to interrogate your data, see patterns you didn't know existed. What days of the week were these observations? Maybe I'm doing performance metrics. Which one of my analysts are collecting most at what times, right? So I can start interacting with some of this data that's being collected to really drive downstream analysis and analytics. So we do see imagery projects growing. Jermaine will get into it in just a little bit um, of, of different types of applications. Um, that we see fit, but as you're, as you're sitting here over the next you know, couple minutes, 10, 15 minutes, think of cer certain workflows that you could help automate for your organization. We'd love to hear that feedback to, to gain an understanding of it. So I've got a couple more minutes here before we switch to, to some final words and, and QA, QC. Um, but we saw the end result of what an imagery project is. How are these things created and how easily can they be created? So in, in, in Excalibur, we have a notion of a guided workflow. This allows you to create these imagery project item types to keep you in the application to create new layers to collect observations, right? So let's quickly step through how to create one of these. Um, at the basis of all imagery projects is imagery. So we as, as Excalibur need to understand what images of interest are you trying to then have a pre-planned workflow designed around. So let's use our, our San Francisco imagery here. It's got some nice oblique imagery. In the sake of time, let's just run a search. We'll grab a couple images, and instead of connecting to Canvas, we're gonna create a new imagery project. At version 1.0 and 1.1, we have two imagery projects, a base imagery project, very simple. I have a set of images, and I want an analyst to take a look at them. Nothing else is required. They may just need to mark up, they may need to mensurate, and that's all they need to do. Cool, I can set that up for them and let them go to work. Or an observation imagery project allows me to collect content to store into the system of record as we just saw. So let's create one of these observation projects um, so that we can see how easy it is to do. 
First, we need to define project details. Since this is a new item type, all items in the portal require a title, a tag, and a summary, right? Well, this is what is required from your imagery project. Tell us about it, right? So this will be the San Fran UC 2019 project. And for the sake of time, we'll say that that's what our summary is. Projects, we're gonna collect um, observations on automobiles and um, um, let's just say trees. And we'll build a new layer about trees. So we'll say trees and automobiles as our tags. I'll share this to my organization. And then we'll go to the next step. So in the previous example, I showed you clicking on contextual layers and we were able to view the pop-ups very quickly. That was because we chose a web map that had existing reference layers. So in this case, let's just pick another web map that I know is around the San Francisco area. It has existing feature services in there and we'll just add that to my project. Next here, this is where the real glory of Excalibur is. I can do one of two things. I can select an existing observation layer. So a layer in your organization that you want to, us to start collecting observations on. So we'll do this one first go around. And uh, in this instance, we're gonna collect on automobiles. So I'm gonna add that automobile layer to my project and I wanna add another one and this time we're gonna create a brand new one. We're gonna create a new trees layer. That's what we had said we're gonna collect on, right? So these are the tree ops. They're gonna be points and these are trees as the tags, right? So I'm literally creating a new dynamic feature service all within Excalibur. Here's where it's telling, we're asking you what fields do you wanna collect on? Right now we're giving you a comments field by default. You can free text anything in there. Well, as a user, I want them to collect on tree types, right? So I'm gonna start creating what we would call domains, values, some call them pick lists, right? So um, let's name some trees out there. We got a spruce tree, right? We'll just throw a couple in here. There could be an oak tree. And lastly, we'll do something like a maple tree, right? So these are all my coded domains. Think of these as the palette of icons that may display for my user. So maybe that's all I want them to collect on. I'll give them a free text of comments and they're gonna collect on the types of trees they see. Next. We're gonna now define the palette of icons that gets displayed when they click on that tool. So for spruces, I want them to have, uh, I don't know, red squares and for maples, they're gonna be uh, green diamonds and oaks, you're gonna be triangles that are orange. Great, so now I'm defining this, this palette here. Lastly, since this is a new layer, we now need to just quickly create that. So this is gonna spin up, it's gonna tell you, hey, give it a second. We're gonna create a new hosted feature service for you on the portal. And we'll go back to our portal here. So again, I didn't go into ArcGIS Pro. I'm not creating a new feature file geo database, a new feature class. I'm not doing this thing called domains, right? I'm kind of staying in Excalibur, but there's my new trees layer. It was just created here on July 10th, right? If I go back to Excalibur, it tells me that my trees layer has now been created. I now added two observation layers to my project. And now I'm at my project summary. What did we just do? We're creating a new San Fran UC 2019 project. It's of type observation. We're collecting observations in automobiles. Um, it's using an existing web map called San Francisco. And we have two observation layers in it. I'm gonna hit create. This is gonna take a second. It's gonna create that new imagery project. And now immediately within my environment, I'm gonna open this project up. So as that creation process, I just may be a supervisor, right? A team lead and I wanna create this thing for a user who can just open it up. They don't have to worry about anything we just did. But let's just verify the things that we had. We wanted them to collect on automobiles and trees, right? There's our project instructions. And if we take a look at our observations, there's that new trees observation layer, right? It's now defined based on the domains I just created. And there's also the existing automobiles layer. So that was just a quick example uh, before we get into some of the remaining slides of this pre-planned workflow. We showed you the end result, we collected we showed those uh, um, observations in downstream analysis, and then we just created one of these new things here in, in ArcGIS Excalibur. And just to confirm that, if I go back to my projects list, there's that new item of, of, that we just created of an imagery project. So I'll send it back over to Juman here to kind of tie the, the final loop. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> so as we mentioned, uh, so Excalibur 1.0 was released uh, in April of this year, um, and 1.1 is actually being released next week on Tuesday. Um, so all the items that you see at the 1.1 roadmap level 
Matt just displayed them, show us. That was the early release of the 1.1 version. So the additional search setting wasn't available at 1.0, but now they're available. Um, the uh, time slider for bringing in historical observation is available at 1.1. The uh, enhancement and creating imagery projects by adding multiple observation layers, you saw a demo of that. And then those uh, single uh, symbols or unique values uh, for, for the creating observation is, is available, you saw those. Um, so where are we going in the future? Um, we talked about this imagery project type. So at the 1.0 and the 1.1, uh, observation management was the object was the uh, project type. So as we move, you know, post one one, we're looking at adding a comparison um, slash change detection uh, project type that would include like a swipe to uh, two images side by side, Flickr maybe have images stack on on top of each other's, so you could quickly see historical images in one single frame. Um, and then we'll uh, improve our safe search feeding uh, features in the catalog. Um, I noticed when, when Matt logged into the uh, Excalibur framework, you probably notice an empty box on the right-hand corner. Well, that box now will be our way of being able to manage these projects. Um, so think of that as a, a RFI-type workflow, so quickly assigning those our, our project across a different organization. Um, we're also looking at introducing um, object detectors for machine learning. So now we're, we're manually collecting those observations. Or what if we're able to bring in some type of algorithm um, to quickly identify those, those uh, observations? Not only that, so as a user collects an observation, it can retrain the algorithm itself inside of the system. So we're looking at ways of doing that. And then uh, later on, probably uh, next year time frame, will introduce this notion of a, a imagery uh, project for, for motion imagery. So that's really about bringing our full motion imagery capability to, to the web. And this caliber will be um, the application in which we can exploit uh, that motion imagery. If you want uh, more information about this caliber, um, here's our public website. There you, you, know, we, um, you find um, access to blogs, um, quick tutorials and videos um, on what you saw today. And if there you have any question, has an email address um, to our Scalibur team, which includes Matt and myself, um, to help whether you have any challenges or you have uh, questions or feature enhancement, let's send an email to that, to that group and we'll definitely respond to you guys. And before I open up uh, to questions, um, you get a chance, please uh, um, conduct a survey on the presentation itself as well as uh, the application itself. We definitely appreciate your feedback. And at this time, I'll open up for questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, for the representation on the fly, what source elevation source is using? So that's uh, dependent on what your image service is published with. So if you can use a local DEM, you can also use a service uh, based on your portal environment. So we will read that in, um, and whatever that is will help the accuracy of, of those being. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a good question. Not yet. So as part of the, the project management, um, I would consider that kind of a dynamic imagery project, right? Like the imagery is always changing. And, and the content and the, the context layers are the same, right? And we're getting to that. We just introduced a new notion of an imagery project. It's a static thing right now. But we will have a dynamic where maybe I'm setting up a query where I only want imagery that meets a specific criteria every 24 hours, every 12 hours to populate. That is where we want to get to. We see that growth, definitely. It's not there today, but it will be. Yes, sir. What would it look like if you connected an existing defense schema like GGDM inside of Excalibur? Does that have all of the uh, contents and information for collecting all your information? Yeah, so gr really great question. So um, the way in which we phrase it is you can bring that in as a, as a web map item, as a reference layer, right? And you can view that all day long. If you want to use that as an, an existing observation layer, there's a couple things that need to happen. Every observation layer needs five things, and we have this documented. But four of the things are pretty easy. They need to be editable enabled. 
They need to have editor tracking. They need to have the appropriate tag in the system called an observation layer. Um, and then lastly, it needs required schema. So the schema that is auto-populated in which I showed you would need to be added to that layer in order for us to consider that an observation layer. And that's key. We went to a bunch of different organizations and everybody does this, some people may call it SOM, Structured Observation Management. From a high level, this observation management, there, no one organization did it exactly the same. So us as a commercial vendor selling a product, we basically tried to come up with a schema that met everybody's. And these were the 12 common fields, actually, that you saw that, that were overlapping. So long-winded answer, but essentially you can, but you would need to add those additional fields to that layer. And then that form, as I collect, you would have a lot of manual fields in that instance, right? You have a lot to collect on. And then whatever your, that, that layer is symbolized on would be your palette that you choose the icons from. So that's how that kind of would work if you wanted to use an existing layer. Um, it's easy enough if you're of that type of persona, right? If you're a GIS user that can use Pro to add fields, it's not very hard. We have it documented, but for some, it may, you know, they may not touch it. So I guess it would just depend on your organization and how it's structured. Anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. Um, is, are you guys looking at a way to not just assign an individual image product to an analyst, but maybe an overarching image product, and then as the images come in, you can assign them to specific analysts? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, from an Esri perspective, um, we share two groups. And I'm sure we all know this, right? We cannot share to an individual today. It is very group driven. So you can add one individual to a group and you can share to that group which has one individual and you're sharing to an individual, right? It's a workaround. <clears throat> Jermon and I don't think we said it. We're part of the Intel development team. It's a new R&D core development team that got stood up three years ago. We're based out of DC. We actually focus our attention on defense and intelligence customer sets um, to help our system become more of what we would call an intelligence system. A lot of people think Esri, they hear mapping, 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 right? We look at a lot of our technology as more of, we have a lot more than just mapping to offer. And we want to try to fill those gaps by understanding the needs of this community, right? And, and that kind of filtrates out. So as part of core development, we understand we need to get to a sharing model that shares two individuals in order for true RFIs to take place. Like, you may be the only person assigned to this, and I want to just easily assign you. So as part of our work, not just on Excalibur, we do work with core development yeah directly to try to get some of these things into our platform so that the rest of the ArcGIS environment can take advantage of that. So no, today we don't have that ability, but we really want to get on that as, as part of our R&D. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you. Yep. 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 So, um, for instance, drone, uh, drone to map. We have a, a, a drone to map product that takes drone imagery and can mosaic it or stitch it together. Um, and as long as that's published out as an image service, we have a couple of those examples. Um, we can use that right in Excalibur. So you can take that that ortho. Um, that you, you made out of, out of your, your drone imagery and serve that out as an image service and we can bring that right in. Yep. Thoughts? Is this, is this of interest? Is this hitting marks on certain workflows? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, so, so really like you're looking at the, the two people that take in requirements that work. We're a very small team. So we hear feedback, and, and um, I'm the lead PE for it. So I rack and stack these things. And um, another key thing before you know, we got a couple minutes here, we release uh, three to four times a year. So we're, we're part of enterprise, but we are two on cadence releases with, with the major and minor of ArcGIS Enterprise. And then we try to go one to two releases off cadence. Why? Because we want to try to deliver an agile product. It's a web app. The expectation of web apps is to constantly be updated with software, technology, capabilities, right? Yep. And we want to make sure that we hear feedback, get it in, and get it back out to you guys. We're building this for, for, for you folks. So 
just something to think about as, as Excalibur releases. We will have a couple off cadent releases from, from Enterprise. So where do you get those cases? What's that? Where do you get those cases? Where do you get access? Where do you get access to this? Yeah. So uh, right now it was released in April. So um, as part of your My Esri, um, if you, you can go to your My Esri and be able to access Excalibur, it does, again, it is a, a premium app. So it will require a license and a cost. Um, that I'm, I'm, I'm not on the sales side of things, but, but you, do, you should be able to go to My Esri and be able to request that. Yeah, yeah it's more like, how do I get it, right? It's, uh, it's they recycle it here from. Yep. So we'll release blogs to let you know it's available, and then that is immediately available on day release on the My Esri site. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, you can show that, the languages? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we, uh, while Matt get plugged up, uh, we support all 39 languages available in Pro, I mean, in Portal. Uh, also, right to left um, for those folks in, in that, that scheme. So I'll just quickly edit my profile to Spanish, you said. So let's take a look at Spanish. I'll save my profile. I'll refire open Excalibur here. My whole portal will actually change real quick. Um, so as part of our testing, uh, we do test in all these languages. Um, so if I fire up Excalibur now, we'll have basically the, the Spanish version of this, right? And I can go through the app, step through, and, and we make sure that we work in those types of languages. So. Any other, yes? Sorry, I keep no, no, go for it. Yeah, we can't do that on vector content yet. Not yet. Uh, I see where you're going with that. We, we understand that need, right? I place a, an observation on a port. I want to inherit those port, port metadata as well as the image metadata. Not there yet, totally, totally tracking on that. It's something we would like to get to. Yep. So you, with regard to the, the languages, this is something I never even thought of. So if I, I have a group of people from multiple countries working with in this, they don't, they're all supposed to speak English, but I'll be honest, it doesn't mean they do. <laughs> so if they work in their native language, and then to put it into wherever I need to look at it as an English speaker, and they change their profile back to English, will it make sense? Or, because I know Google Translate sucks in, in that. I was a sphincter one time when I was a contractor. <laughs> I was converted contractor into German. Yes. So uh, I, I'm just wondering if this would be optimal because for people who don't, they could work in their native language, they'd be more productive, and then if it could convert, make sense in English. Yeah, so um, I don't, I'm not 100% on this answer, so this is a, an 80% answer, I'll give you this much. So I think the way that that works is, so if I just switch my language here in Portal, and I viewed it in Spanish, right? The, 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 what was written to the database, if I were to look at a feature service, it, it's all database level, whatever that is set at. The UI is one thing, but what was written to the, the database is the other. So it's hard for me to tell, I guess it's like really what the database is set to would be probably the answer to that. But again, that's an 80%, 80% answer there. I could try to track that down for you. Yes, sir. Today, <laughs> no. I mean, seriously. If you if you have a feature service that that you want to use in one of your projects, you can. Down the road, we are going to place in um, uh, go to X Y um, and uh, geocoding. So I know Locate XT has ability to do geocoding based on reading in. So again, we can use that set model of geocoding service to be able to go to. Um, Probably won't have a true, like I can drag and drop a, you know, a, a Word doc and then Excalibur. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. Uh, not the intention of the initial project, but if we do find a way to wire that in, it's, it's possible. A great question. So I'm actually the product manager for Locate XT, so, um, and with Excalibur, so we definitely, is on the roadmap making it happen. For those that in the room that don't know, so Locate XT is our unstructured um, capability, bringing unstructured data text inside of Excalibur. I mean, inside of our GIS. Question? No, no, that, that's fine. 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Oh, oh. Yeah. In the future, yes, that's our, yeah, that's our change detection project, yes. So we just finished with one one, so once we get back to DC, I mean, that's our next thing to be working on. So our next version, we'll have that um, by the end of the year. All right, guys, I think our time is up. We've got folks waiting. Thank you very much Thank for your you. attention and the questions. Appreciate it.